gonna walk down, anyone you want, but I think right here, we're gonna walk down to the Capitol. It would shake a vanguard of democracy to its core. As America's Congress met to certify Joe Biden as president, thousands of pro-Trump supporters stormed the Capitol in Washington. The outgoing president had alleged voter fraud. The violence on January 6 left five people dead. An FBI probe into the attack would later result in hundreds of arrests. They broke the glass. With the country still in shock, Joe Biden took his oath of office. His swearing in as the 46th president of the United States saw Camilla Harris also become the first female vice president. But the ceremony was tarnished, both by the pandemic and fears of another attack. Biden pleaded for unity. Silence the will of the people. This is our historic moment of crisis and challenge. And unity is the path forward. And we must meet this moment as the United States of America. By means of executive order, Biden fulfilled nearly a third of his electoral promises in his first 100 days. But the president's ambitious spending plans soon led to cracks in his Democratic majority. In June, he made his first official trip abroad and a European tour in which he hammered the message, America is back. At the G7 summit in Cornwall, he tried to heal the damage done to the transatlantic relationship during the Trump era. And he did the same days later at a NATO summit, where he described China as the new great challenge for the alliance. The same week in Switzerland, Biden held talks with President Putin. The summit came only weeks after he called the Russian leader a killer, sparking a diplomatic crisis. In Geneva, Biden called for a more predictable relationship, Putin described the meeting as constructive. By September, Biden had angered a key ally. The controversial AUKUS military pact between Australia and the UK resulted in a full-blown diplomatic crisis with Paris after Canberra cancelled a multi-billion euro deal to buy French submarines. At the G20 in Rome, Biden apologised to President Macron, admitting there'd been a mistake. A few days later in Glasgow at the COP26, both the US and China, the planet's biggest CO2 emitters, agreed to do more to tackle the climate emergency. A few days later, Biden held a long virtual chat with China's Xi Jinping. Beyond the good words, the two men remain wide apart on a host of issues, including the future of Taiwan.